if I was ever, you know, I learned so much in those nine years of being a franchisee, but I would never do business like that again. I would do it with a whole different mindset because I'm a different person now that mm -hmm. gets it. But I'll tell you the valuable lessons I learned going through that process. I won't give those back, even the bad times. It made me who I am today. So no, today I have several other um, businesses that we do. A lot of, you know, my training, I've got, you know, podcasts, I've got all the different things I do. Um, and I, I come from it from the different perspective. I'm a big believer in E-Myth by Michael Gerber. Mm -hmm. Work on your business, not in your business. And so everything I do, I systemize so that it can work without me. And I don't have to be the main person making it run. You're just hearing the next level stuff that we always talk about, but it's very difficult, especially for the control freak entrepreneur part of us, which <laughs> entrepreneurs are all control freaks. It's very hard to give up control. When you start really going to the next level, you have to trust people. You have to learn how to do that. You have to make better hiring decisions. You know, it's, it's a big process to pull yourself away. You got to know your effective hourly rate, because if you're doing things that are, that are, you know, under that, that's a waste, you know, so you've got to get these, these budgeting things in there. What I teach people is the two most powerful words I use in my life are what's next. Mm -hmm. You know, now picture this March 10th, 2020, I land back in Canada from doing a powerful three day training in India. Cause I, on average BC before COVID, I was traveling over 200,000 miles a year around the world doing trainings and still taking six months a year off. I like my time off. Let me be clear on that. And so March 10th, I land back in Canada, the world changes. All of a sudden, all my live events around the world, 11th of March, I go into lockdown because I was just in another country. All of a sudden, all my trains around the world get canceled. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in revenue gone in an instant. And for the first two weeks, my wife and I, we got sick. We were in victim mode. What's going to happen? What if? What if? The million what if scenarios that play in your mind. And then when we started, you know, we gave ourselves a couple of weeks to allow that to run its course. We finally got the test. Okay, we don't have COVID, even though we're sick. Your mind's that powerful. We made ourselves sick, not sure what it was. And we must have it from what everybody's saying. And when we got through that, we sat down, we went, okay, what's next? Now I'm going to say one thing, you know, when he was talking about the question, so what's next? And then all in, one of the questions I tell people is, is from that book, who moved my cheese? What would you do if you were not afraid? Yes. Well, I would just go and go ahead and build it now because I've got the time and the energy to really do it. And we're going to be stuck here. So might as well do it now. Yep. Well, you just answered your question. You cannot let fear run your life. And that is hard. I mean, I get it. We may have success that other people don't have, but we also go through the journeys. We go through the ups and downs. We're no different. You know, and that's what I want real now. Is it possible you and I have information other people don't have? Absolutely. But isn't it on the same level possible they have information we don't have? Yes. Absolutely. And that's what people quit putting others on a pedestal. Say, you know what? I'm going to take the nuggets of gold and I'm going to apply it. Because if you go into the fear and you hold yourself back, you're not going to move forward. I love the saying that says one step in the right direction is worth a thousand years of thinking about it. And the perfectionists try to yes. think, think, think themselves through. And they, no wonder you get overwhelmed because you've got a million what if scenarios in your head. And what did Mark Twain said? I love how he said, so he said, you know, I've had thousands and thousands and thousands of problems in my life. Most of which have never actually happened. <laughs> yeah can relate to that one, right? Yeah, that was, that, that's an oldie, but a goodie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> when it comes to especially entrepreneurs, here's what I want them to understand. I use the acronym open to keep okay. it really, really easy. And the first phase that, cause we're always going through these phases. Mm -hmm. And I love something that you said, Jennifer, you know, if your audience, they can't see me, I am aerodynamic. That means I'm ah. your magic genie. So what would you love to do if anything was possible? I will be the genie that's giving you permission to go for it. Okay. <laughs> and so You have to watch the video on YouTube to see the, to see what he's talking about, but he is very right. genie like. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and so the O stands for the observation phase, the observation phase. And what that means, this is the time. And Jennifer, have you ever heard the saying, you're a human being, not a human doing? Have you ever heard that saying? 
Actually, no, I haven't. This well, see, is the first time. That's interesting. Okay. Because a lot of people, when they get busy, 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 people go, hey, you're a human being. You're not a human doing. Well, when you're in the observation phase, you're a human creating. This is the time to dream. Mm 